MovieWeb.com. This holiday season comes the greatest love story ever told. Based on the novel by Nobel Prize winning author Gabriel Garcia Marquez, Love in the Time of Cholera. I write this very short note to let you know that I love you. I think of you every moment, and our love will triumph. Who is he? He's a nobody. At your age, love is illusion. Ben referred to you as a, uh, a treasure of Italian cinema. It's going to be unveiled, you know, in front of the American audience. Mm -hmm. um, how does that make you feel to get such great praise from your, uh, your co-stars? Co well, it's, this is my first American movie, and I've always worked in Europe so far, so I am... I'm very excited. I'm very scared of how people can perceive that, how can people can react to my work. But at the same time, really, however, however it goes, this is my my heat. I mean, this is so this has been such an amazing, amazing experience, professional and human that I am totally happy and I'm totally in love with the work that we did and with Mike Newell for the possibility that he gave me and I will be never enough thankful to him. I have to explain myself, it's difficult because I'm a plain man. But ever since your mother died, you've been, you've been, a daughter, a daughter is a jewel. It's a jewel. I, I'm, I'm a rough diamond, but you, you're, you're the, the crown. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't work for me. We didn't come here for me. We came here for you. For you. But you don't know how, just how beautiful you are. You, 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 you're much too beautiful to marry a telegraph operator. You play uh, Giovanna's father. She plays yeah. Fermina, uh, the protective father. I'm I mean. the dad, the universal dad <laughs> that says, you're not going with that poet, skater, slacker, loser. You're going with the doctor. You're marrying a doctor. So what was it like working with her, an Italian actress who really is brilliant yeah. in this film on a big budget American production? Well, you know, she, a great talent is great talent no matter where you come from. So it doesn't matter that, and you link up in that kind of respect. And the only thing was, you know, here I gotta play her dad, I gotta be, 30 or 40 years older than her. So, you know, we did the aging, the wrinkles around the eyes, the age spots, balding. And that was exciting for me to play this older man, slow myself down a little bit. This is so nice. I could spend the rest of my life here. <laughs> oh, my boots are killing me. <laughs> I'll have to take them off. I'll take off mine too. Let's see who finishes first. <laughs> oh. Oh. You won. You won. But now I realize it wasn't my boots at all. Is this wire cage under my skirt? Mm. Nothing could be simpler. Take it off. I won't look. <laughs> we filmed in Cartagena with yeah. an English director, Mike right. Newell. Right. You know, there was some hubbub about, well, you know, should it be in Spanish, should it be in English? Right. Can you speak about that, about the English language, you know, production of a, of a famous, like, Spanish literature? Well, you know, I, I, what I would say is that um, everyone knows that, that, that Gabriel Garcia Marquez is, is beloved the world over, uh, and he's been translated into many different languages, and so, the universality of his appeal is apparent for all to see. So I, I think it's really just a semantical issue that, that the film was shot in, in English and ultimately not troubling at all. If you really look at the film, the essence of the novel, even though it was originally written in Spanish, is there. Is it a uniquely Latin story? Absolutely. But the subject matter um, and the human understanding um, will be easy for all to see, all to see because um, at the end of the day, you know, we all love stories. And uh, if those stories have something that emotionally we can latch on to, whether we're from 
South America or Europe or Africa or Asia or, or um, anywhere else. Um, that's all that really matters. And I think that's what the magic of the book is about, and hopefully we capture that in the film. So, you want a job in the River Company of the Caribbean? Yes. Yes. Well, are you any good at uh, writing letters? I think so. I, I, I write poetry too. I enter a poem every year in the Poetic Festival. I have never won, but... So, you have a way with words, huh? Yes. Good. Perhaps you can tell me what this means. In my birthday last year, someone made a speech in my honor. He said I suffered from lucid dementia. No, what does that mean? Lucid dementia means you are clearly crazy. All right, so you've got the great Latin cast, you've gone out there and you've really shored up the film with, you know, these great Latin uh, production designers and so on. But what was it like as an English director filming in Cartagena who doesn't speak Spanish? I mean, how was the difficulty for you in controlling the crew? You did, oh, in controlling the crew? Yeah, and like getting, just getting what your Come what your on, word what's was it say on the back of my chair? It says, director, if I don't, <laughs> if they step out of line, they get their hands chopped off. What are you talking about? No, we're, we're uh, you know, film, film crews are very hierarchical um, and uh, you've got to go, you've got to be a real twerp to lose your innate uh, given authority over, no, that was fine. Um, we also had a, a, a wonderful uh, first assistant and everybody, of course, was immensely turned on by the project um, because they could see that this wasn't a sort of simplistic cinema story. This was about real people. This had a, the most wonderful, generous, humane take on these, the, the, on the characters. And never once does the story go down a track that you expect, not once. It's full of these, these twists and turns and surprises. And so, the, the boys working on the film thought themselves, as did I, thought themselves immensely lucky. And we just worked out a language, you know? We just kind of worked it out. Um, and I was dealing with uh, animal handlers and electricians and um, uh, all sorts of technicians who spoke no English, but you sort of speak, you speak film language, you know? You know that you, the guy who is wrangling the horse knows you want it to stop right there. He just, it's, it's, he knows what lens you're on. He knows where the camera is, he, know, he knows. Um, and so those things have a kind of um, unwritten language which, which you share. Um, and uh, I think everybody felt very good about that. Sarabina. I have waited for this opportunity for 51 years, nine months, and four days. That is how long I have loved you from the first moment I cast eyes on you until now. I repeat to you once again my vow of eternal fidelity, everlasting love. You and Javier play these characters beautifully over 51 years, and, and they age. They age over yes, time. Yes, they're, they're they very, do. And they're very different <laughs> from they are in the beginning. Talk about the process of fleshing out those characters over 51 years in the film. The first time I met Mike Newell, he said to me, you could, you could do the young part, but would you do the, the oldest part? Would you, would you do her, Fermina, old? Because I, I think you could do that. And I thought, my God, I mean, what he's talking about, it's impossible. But at the end, I, I thought about the great, great, great possibility that he was giving to me, and the great trust. And it was impossible to say, no, I don't want to do that. So I said, okay, let's go for it. And we went, we all, me, Javier and Benjamin, went one month before in Cartagena to, to work with a, with a dialogue coach and to work with a movement coach for the aging of the, of the movements and all that. And we worked very hard. We worked every day. But at the end, that was one of the most interesting th things that I've ever done in my whole career.
51 years, nine months, and four days. That is how long I have loved you. <laughs>